Okay, so what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to compare things. So for example, if I was to ask you like, uh, what's more unusual, a 12 pound baby or someone with an IQ of 145? You know, pardon me? The IQ? Well, you might argue, right? Like how many people have, uh, they've met, you know, a relative or somebody that was at least 12 pounds when they were born? Well, how about here? Was anybody here 12 pounds or more when they were born? Wow, okay. But how about IQ of 145? Has anybody met somebody with an IQ of 145? I don't know. I don't know. That's quite high. So you, know, you maybe you took like one on Facebook. Maybe that's what you did, right? You know, uh, I see them. They email the apps out and you do them on Facebook. But uh, here's how we're going to look at being able to actually measure which more significant. If we knew what the uh, that the baby's average weight is nine pounds, and the standard deviation is two pounds, okay? And we also knew that the average IQ is a hundred and that the standard deviation is 15 points, can somebody argue, well, it's not really an argument anymore, can somebody explain why the IQ is more significant than the 12 pound baby? People are getting stupider these days. People are getting stupider? Uh, well, if that's true and people are getting stupider, then it'll be reflected in our data. So, but how, how do we know looking at it, Joey? Yeah, that's right. That's what we want to be able to talk about today. It's more significant because 15 points for the standard deviation, you end up having to go three standard deviations here. So this is three standard deviations away, whereas a 12-pound baby is only two standard deviations, or sorry, uh, one and a half. Wait, how do, you, how do we know that? Because um, the information was... It's two pounds for the standard deviation and 15 points. So we'll practice figuring out, but this is what a z-score does. A z-score is a way of measuring how far away you are from the average. So let's just uh, copy that down so you know what uh, the z-score is for. So we'll call it a way of comparing So I'm going to just use the letter, um, let's say, S equals the score of um, the data to measure. So the way you calculate a z-score is you take the uh, average... Sorry. You take um, S and you subtract the average and you divide it by the standard deviation. So the first, the top part of that formula, it wants to know how far away from the average are you? How far do you deviate from the average? And then when you divide by the standard deviation, that tells you how many standard deviations you are from the average. So the top is, what's the difference from the average? The bottom is how, how many in terms of standard deviation. So let's try an example here. So you see it is fairly painless, um, that it is a little easier than what we last talked about. Um, so here's Haley, who's going to run in Vancouver and Lake Louise. She has uh, her running times over here. And this is the information about her running club. So what we want to know is, you know, for example, Lake Louise is higher altitude. So maybe it's a more significant thing that she ran um, in Lake Louise than in Vancouver. But how do we actually make our case uh, one way or the other? So what we want to do is figure out the z-score for each. So I'll put z Vancouver. It's going to be her time. Take away the average time. And divided by the standard deviation. 
and I get uh, negative 1.29. So again, the way you can think of this is her score is negative 1.29 standard deviations, meaning she's to the left. She's faster by 1.29 standard deviations than the rest of the club. Okay, so we'll see what happened in Lake Louise. Her Z-score for Lake Louise is how fast she ran, 24.77 minus 25.57. And we're going to divide it by the standard deviation. This is how many standard deviations she was in her time. So I'll calculate it for you. And this time it looks like she's negative 1.33. So in which one of these is she further from the average running time? Zeal. Zeal? Yeah, Lake Louise, she's further. So that means she was faster than the average in uh, Lake Louise. That was a better run for her there because she was further from the rest of the pack. Okay? Um, anybody heard of Marilyn Vos Savant? She was famous for a while because she had the highest ever tested IQ at 185, um, which is pretty smart. So uh, it's like off the charts. She used to have a column called Ask Marilyn, and people would write in problems for her to figure out. And the problem I showed you, the Monty Hall problem, that was one that she was famous for, and that's where I, I mentioned her earlier. So uh, you can look her up on Wikipedia. She's pr pretty interesting. But uh, what we said was, the average IQ is 100. The standard deviation is 15. Let's figure out um, what her Z-score is. So we'll call this Z Marilyn. Her score is 185. The average is 100. And the standard deviation is 15. So this will tell us how many standard deviations from the average that Marilyn's score is. Okay. So Marilyn's score is 5.667 standard deviations away, which is like one in a billion. It's so far, it's so rare, that I bet you we won't even be able to measure it with our calculator or with uh, what I'm going to show you here. Yes, Tim. Um, where did you get 15? 15 is the standard deviation for a IQ test. Um, it's up oh. here at the beginning. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you the information. But the only reason I didn't write it again was it's just above on the page there. Okay, so one question we might ask then is how much smarter is she than the rest of the uh, um, world? And I'm not going to be able to do this without my uh, internet connection for this one, but I'll pause here. So let's try something with um, anybody uh, thinking of going to like Harvard? Maybe? Well, let's just say for now that the average IQ, and it might be higher, let's say it was 125. Okay. Um, okay, so you're on your way to Harvard, where the average IQ to get in, let's say, was 125. So how much smarter do you have to be than the average person to get into Harvard? So first of all, we're always doing a comparison. That means we're going to be working with um, a Z-score. So we're comparing ourselves against the average IQ, which is... Uh, 100. Just a second here. Okay, so the Z score for Harvard is going to be 125 minus 100. Um, that leaves us with uh, 25 out of 15. So we have a z-score to get into Harvard of 1.67. So now I'll show you on the table how to look up that z-score and we'll figure out how much smarter you have to be. So in the table, the uh, percentage So the percentage in the table with an IQ less than or equal to 125 is 0.9525.
So if we were looking at it, this is what the graph would look like. We'd be over here at 125, and we've just found the area of all these people with IQs less than 125. So if we want to know how to get into Harvard, this is the Harvard crowd here, the smarter section. So that means it's the remaining four point seven five percent. Now, we're also going to need to use the table to look up a percentage and come up with your z-score. So that's what I want to do here with you is to find 75% in the table. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll put it here just in case you're still copying it. Okay, so according to this, it was um, 0 0.675 was your z-score. And remember the z-score, what you do is you took your score... You subtracted the average, and you divided by the standard deviation. So to rearrange it, the IQ I would need would be to take um, 0 0.675 and say that'll be equal to, I don't know the IQ score, take away the average, which is 100, and divided by the standard deviation of 15. So you'd need an IQ to be smarter than at least 75% of people out there. You'd need to test with an IQ of at least 110. That was from the table, which I can't show you without an internet connection on this computer. Yeah, in this setting, I'm going to have to do it with you when we meet on Thursday or Friday, what your day is. Because unfortunately, I just... I can't move around like that in the theater with you, but it's in your textbook table, the z-score table. For now, if you just want to take the example down, and then we'll work on it in tutorial as well when we do it. That's a really valid point, and I'm sorry about that, but unfortunately, that's the way things have to run. Okay. Um, so we'll probably have time to do just... Uh, one more. So why don't we do this one here? Um, it says a beverage company has machines that fill their bottles to an average of a half liter, and the machine's not perfect, so sometimes it pours a little more and a little less. If the standard deviation is 20 milliliters, so sometimes it's 20 milliliters over, sometimes it's 20 milliliters under, and the guys that stand there as the bottles go by will take it away if you're if you're over 0.53 or under 0.47 what percentage are wasted. So what we want to know is what are these z-scores? So for example, um, let's call this, if you go over, we'll call this the high. It's going to be 0 0.53 minus 0 0.5. divided by 0 0.02. So its score is, uh, oops, sorry. Um, sorry, that should be 0.2.
Oh no. And the Z-score for the low. Would be negative one and a half. Yeah, because one is below the average, one is above the average. So if I look it up in the chart, um, a Z score of one and a half, this is 0 0.9332, and a Z score of negative one and a half is going to be 0 0.0559. So if I was to show you what this looks like in the graph, that means I have my low and I have my high. And if I do one in, um, let's say I'll do high in green. Oh, sorry. Let me label this here. There'd be 0 0.0559 in that section. So um, this says that 93% are on the left side. So what would be left over? You probably want a calculator to help you out to get that. But what's left over then? Oh, sorry, theater must be a slow. So I'll just finish this last question. Um, everybody's gone for the day but um, anyways uh, this is the what's left over which is 0 0.0668 so that's what you'd find in this portion of the data in that tail there so altogether this shaded area in green represents 0.668 plus the 0. 0559, which makes for a total of 0 0.1227. So about 12.27% of these bottles are being rejected.